Hi, this is Jeremy at Massively.com, taking a look at the Runes of Magic closed beta. This is the, the new starting area. Coast of Opportunity is what it's called. This little area here is Rending Harbor. So I'm going to take a journey through the area. So it's going to be kind of graphical oriented. And I'll be commenting a little bit here and there. Not a whole lot. Mostly this is just for you to be able to um, actually see what the new zone looks like. Later in another video, I will get to the, high, the new high level zone, my end of my level ones. But that's not going to be in this video. Start off in Rending Harbor. Let's see. Just run through it. I think they did a really good job with the graphics overall. As you can see, uh, the Another thing about this zone that you'll see that I really like is the uh, the addition of so much stuff going on with the NPCs. Like right here, there's just this constant fighting between the uh, Silver Shadow Adventurers Guild and the uh, pirates that keep come running in from the coast. And later on, there's, there's there's many other fights like this, just constantly with the spells going on. And just neat stuff to look at and feel like you're part of uh, some exciting action. Also, you'll notice. Let's take a quick look at the level of these pirates. guy's level 7 already, so just a, a short distance we travel to one of 7 levels. And you'll notice we have a little event over here, Invaders on the Scene. So that's another um, addition they've made overall. And they added this to old, new and old events. They've added a ton of old, new old events. That that run pretty much run through every level of the game. So there's there's gonna be world events for any level player. Unless they change it. It is beta. We 
just ran through Hefner Camp, and now the mobs on the other side are level 15. So, this is something you're gonna s we're already seeing is the mobs level fast within a short distance traveled. Up on the little hills there are just uh, like a little elven camp. Not a whole, not a whole much else. Not a whole lot more. And check this out too. Um, the textures seem to be a little bit better in the areas of this new zone. Textures on this bone. I thought that was something that was kind of neat. You'll get a better idea as we go through and see more stuff. Down there, it's just a little, um, little mine, which is typical. It's a typical little tiny mine with, with uh, not much in it that you see in other old air, old zones. Just more, more mobs with more, uh, more green Mestra woodlands. This is the gloomy kind of swampy forest, I guess. I guess we got a little bit of this in uh, Weeping Coast. Only this is darker and a little more eerie. So we're in the new town, Lionside Tribe, and we've got another event, and the mobs are around level 26 already. This is Lionside Tribe. I'm going to deviate from the main path to show you something pretty cool.
the graphics in this zone. Okay, these guys are level 31 now. More of the more of the same small tiny uh, mine shaft. overlooks an area we came from. This is a this is a neat looking area right here. And I think this is a spot that kind of exemplifies the uh, the graphical improvement. Other than the little water water lighting glitch that that in the old game man. Apart from that, um, they are doing a great job with, uh, with being creative and imaginative with the layout of the terrain and the textures. Uh, even even the, the, um, the simple way that they laid out this bridge. That is kind of like part of some of the planes are underwater. gone very far and we're already seeing uh, a lot of different styles of terrain within just within this one zone so far and we're gonna see a lot more and that's one of the things I think is really cool uh, about this zone. We started off on a, a little coastal region with sand and beaches, uh, a couple little towns that seemed like the American wild frontier then we got into that dark, gloomy swamp. Now we're in this sort of rocky, rocky brown, barren area. With some scraggly trees. And it's gonna uh, be changing again fast as we move along here. this way it doesn't go very far it's pretty much more of the same there there is a, a neat little crumbled uh, crumbled statue or or in on the old golem one of the old columns that seem to be broken apart in a couple a couple wisps that you'd have to fight but it dead ends so we're just gonna keep going this way And up there, this desert way station just goes up the hill there a little ways, and there's like a, there's a tiny little camp up there. You see these 
guys are level 35. And we're getting into... And then suddenly it's going to change into this pretty cool snow area. interior in this even though it looks like a gigantic structure which again I'm I have reservations about but it's really cool it's really cool on the outside another um, world then here too. These guys, you have to fend off these guys that are, I guess, subhumans, ferocious ancient subhumans, level 41. designed crafting station that uh, may or may not be in the cash shop. But we'll run through this on the side. We're not skipping any content. The uh, main road takes a sharp like hairpin turn.
this little valley right here. I'm not positive if there's actually two zones here, but this does seem reminiscent of how of how Runes of Magic has been separating the zones. Usually you go through your filter or funnel through a, a small little area into the next zone. But seeing how the map is blanked out. Now this does still say Coast of Opportunity and it might change here if I remember right. Last time I came through here, uh, the sky changed colors and it got dark and brooding. This is still showing it to be pretty light. It could have been the day-night cycle. But these are some pretty massive ruins here. Running through. See this now, Coast of Opportunity did change to this Xaviera, 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 but <laughs> even though I can't pronounce it, it may be a different zone, I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out for sure when the chapter is released. So far too, we've been traveling a pretty good distance. If it's one zone, it's one huge zone, and it's obviously much bigger than any previous Runes of Magic zone. Down there is another little mine. Again, typical little tiny mine that just ends after a short distance. There might be actually that one, or there is one mine I did see that went in a little bit further. That uh, it was probably it was getting close to the size of say like the Goblin Mines or something like that. Not huge, but not not the typical real small one. Okay, here we are. And another town and another event. Decent sized little town. This event gives you some kind of a buff. I tried figuring it out, but I couldn't. I don't know if the uh, event's finished or not. Over here. Over here is a really cool looking place. 
think this is robust. It's like, um... Can't go in it, at least not right now. When I was here last time, and, and it was dark, there were a, a constant string of NPCs that ran from that one town, and ran all the way down the road over the bridge, and ran up into here. It was like this never-ending stream of NPCs. It was kind of interesting. I didn't know if maybe it was part of the event, or just for looks. Again, something I'm a little bit disappointed with, with in regards to robust, robust <laughs> is uh, it looks like this gigantic castle with all these spires and stuff, and you just can't go in it. Even that one room, I looked through the gates, and even if it does let you in there, that's like well, maybe one, one little tiny room in comparison to that entire structure that you see from the outside. Here's, um, this is another event here. I never could trigger it. But we're entering the Wailing Forest. This is another little interesting area. There's all these injured, injured guys that are sort of like infected by this, because it's zombies. It's like zombie land here. At night time, it has a pretty cool, you know, a, I think it's a cooler effect, because it's dark, and so it adds to the, adds to it, the feeling. But that little area, we could have went up a ramp that went up to some, a little ground and across the bridge, and then it just basically leads right back down to here, so there's not a whole lot we missed. These guys are lost horses, so maybe there's a quest to round up horses. Wailing Masta is level 48. There's a little encampment here. Bordered by a little swamp on the back end. I thought this was a pretty cool looking area over here. Some sort of harpy nest, maybe. The graphics are pretty good. If you get closer to this big nest here, you'll see this an incubated harpy power core. I fought it a couple times and nothing really happened. I killed it and then like a minute later it respawned.
couple of the camps we're getting into around here are a little more colorful. They have these they have these rune diagrams. It might be that they're maybe these camps are close to some malevolent evil and so they've erected up lots of rune circles t t for added protection, maybe. This is Delia's realm, and you can see a lot, lots of NPCs here. Another event. Something about delivering supplies. Got some skeleton guys here, level 50. Now this is a pretty cool little area in here. This is what's pretty cool about this area. Oh, I'm gonna have to protect myself, I'm getting bombarded. This, um, these NPCs make their way into here. Like this guy keeps going in further and a few other guys will make their way all the way into the center here and around around the central area of the ruins and fights break out between the supply escort and all these enemies it's, and it's pretty cool to look at because there's all these spells going off so it really adds to a little bit of excitement you know it adds to adds uh, some fun, a little bit of fun realism. Last time I was here, the NP there were more NPCs and they were spread out even more around the ruins here. So, I could look from a distance and you just saw spells going off all over the place and a lot of intense action. Here's another camp with some some more fighting and another event. And this this event I tried it and I couldn't complete it, but I think I went about it sort of the right way. Um, this is the Inferno Gardens, and it's actually a pretty big area. It's like a giant topiary maze. And when the event started, I wasn't sure what to do, and I was just sitting here killing stuff, and then all of a sudden I saw the NPCs come along, and they walk real slow, so I decided to follow them. We followed a big path around a bunch of corners, and, and 
deeper into the um, deeper into the the garden until we met this guy, Ogest. He's he's a um, he's crown level boss. But I'd fight him and, and get him about over 50% done and he'd disappear and then a t clock would start in the time it would take for him to respawn and I wasn't sure what to do anymore. But yeah, this is a pretty big area and uh, the event I think, I don't know how short, how short lived the event will be for people who figure it out. But right here is Ogast. But if we move past him, we'll see a bunch of NPCs at the foot of these steps here, and there's a giant barrier that I cannot get past. There might be other big places like this off the beaten path that I haven't discovered yet. I tried to uh, poke my nose around everywhere I could. Over there, that's just sort of the outside. There's nothing there, really. See, here's the NPCs. They talk a lot, and they kind of kill stuff, and then after it's killed, they'll get back on their journey and continue forward. And this seems to be a dead end for the zone. These guys are level 50. And I can't figure out where to go from here. I seem to have followed the main path through the whole zone, twisting and winding its way through until we get to here. I don't think I made a wrong turn anywhere. I've tried doubling back. Uh, it could be that this gets back on to the main path here and it seems to go to this partial tunnel that is blocked off but even when you look in there though it looks like there is no tunnel that goes back so I don't know but this has been um, this has pretty much been the, the uh, look at the new starting zone uh, as far as how I feel about it, um, I think the zone, I think the zone's pretty magnificent. I think this is the most geographically and graphically intense zone they've ever had. It's so, like, it's so very well designed. The terrain is, the terrain, the hills, all the different textures are better it's just it's just nicely varied and it looks really good the uh, I don't want to say weather effects but the lighting changes in areas and then we have snow we have rock we have sandy beach we have uh, dark gloomy swamps we have grassy plains it's so it's so varied it's really cool and there's stuff ever around every corner there's NPCs warring with each other all the time which is really cool it just adds to that sense of not being alone that you're in a living world um, adds gets you excited it's all I definitely think it's the best zone yet as far as that goes.
but conversely I don't know how I feel quite yet about the fact that they took this great zone and then squished levels 1 through 50 mobs all together in it um, I guess I guess I'm, I'm a little weary on the basis that it feels a little bit like it feels a little bit like a grind farm it feels a little bit like they know they wanted a grind farm and they and they gave it to you and they said look here's a grind farm with just better graphics and uh, I don't really I don't really like that kind of thing uh, I'm not playing I'm not playing a third person shooter I'm not playing I didn't start playing because I loved playing games like uh, like Tomb Raider you know only with other people running around with me it, I'm not playing a third person shooter I, I, I part of the reason why I really got into Runes of Magic was because it it was a, the zones were seamless the, um, it you know the quests were great it basically it was a package deal originally it was a package deal and I, I I do really still love runes of magic it's still my favorite and my preferred MMO all around I'm just simply saying this just to just to tell you some of the misgivings I have right now it's by no means saying that I'm starting starting to lose my interest in the game and oh no I'm gonna quit playing no that's not it at all I'm just simply simply trying to give trying to express you know both positive and negative how I feel about just this newest chapter of you know just the starting zone it's very so basically it's like the zone is very cool just all around but another thing about the about squishing all these mobs together how are how are you going to have have a varied interesting quest layout it seems to it seems that by squishing mobs too close together see everything affects everything basically <laughs> I, you know i'm not trying to sound all zen or something but everything's connected and you know developers have to take that into consideration and i certainly could not i certainly could be missing the i could be missing the point here or missing certain facts but the uh, let's run back through it gives something interesting to look at instead of just me jerking the camera around but so you have a I mean, in, you move a hundred feet, and and mobs jump up twenty levels. It's so. What are you going to do? Go into the very first town, and they're going to say, "Okay, walk one feet to your left, and kill twenty of these." And then you're going to go back, and that goes, "Oh, great! Now walk t uh, two feet to your left and kill twenty of these." You know, um, cynically, I miss. I'm wondering you know I'm thinking it's going to affect it's going to affect the game design philosophy and it's gonna gonna negatively affect feeling and emotion and and uh, things that are that the game evoke in players um, how are, and then when you have that questing going on are you go, are you going to have to also have to also try to even more artificially make up a story like to have actual setting realness like this like this is story we're looking at I don't mean when I say story I don't I'm not dryly referring to uh, 10 pages out of a book or you know a whole book story story is not just words on paper story this is story we have story here we have all these NPCs standing here why are they standing here I don't know uh, you know let's find out they're oh they're standing here then we find out why they're going in to fight the malevolent evil the skeletons well why is there a war why are these skeletons here what that's all that story and we go on and on and on and uh, 
that affects that affects gameplay as much as numbers do, in my opinion. Um, Mass of, look at games like Mass Effect or Dragon Age. You can't. I don't think you can simply pass those off and say, "Oh, that's because they're single-player games." Um, well, I don't. That's true, but I think. I think they're obviously loaded with lots of story, and the way the story is told, and I think that probably has a good deal with how to do with how successful that game, those games were. Um, sure, we'll have games like Tetris and that, but so getting back to my point. Um, the uh, the fact that all the mobs are squished so close together, I I'm a little apprehensive about. Be not just because it feels like a grind farm, and it feels like they said, oh, here, let's just give you a grind farm. And which is weird is they put it in what I consider one of, <laughs> in a magnificently designed zone. Graphically, the zone, I think this zone is terrific. I really do. There's lots of hills. There's lots of up and down. Um, now, one thing I am disappointed in is the buildings. You can't go in the buildings. And that, that plays into what I feel about story. You should be able to go into the buildings. Uh, the distillery in Aslan is one of the coolest buildings. And I think I think even people that don't really c care about the buildings still like that building. And I think it's because it's a building you can go inside of. And that's that's kind of... That's kind of being too general about how I feel about it and what I mean, but it's part of it's part of gameplay. It's part of letting the player say, "Oh, I here's a house. It's a real house. My player is a real person. Here's a house that my player can go inside of and talk to people and get quests and you know things like that instead of what I call painted rocks." Now there are a couple of houses here that like have one room you can go into, but it seems to be getting away from the living world feel. The other big reason is um, that it's he, there's a very linear feel to it. Not just the um, the quick rise in mobs in the level of mobs adds to that feeling a little bit, gives it a little bit of a linear feel, but what else it, it does is the, the mobs, the end of the zone ends with level 50 mobs, right? And it only seems, there only seems to be one entry point and one exit point, and I actually haven't even found the exit point, but the entry point is the coast, is the coast line. Well, when you're there, there's nowhere to go except to the end. And that at the end, it's level 50 mobs. So think about... What I'm thinking about is how that affects... Um, how that affects replayability of this land, of this area. How many people are going to want to... In the same way that people love to always revisit Varanus. People of all levels are always going back to Varanus always going back to Logar, going back to visit the low-level players in Logar, or just hang out. Uh, they always have the events in Logar and Silver Spring. Varanus is one of the main cities. There's always uh, stuff to go back to, because you can go back, and you and there it's positioned centrally, like with where roads lead to lots of different places. Uh, to different dungeons that people people go back to help low-level people. This this zone feels way more cut off in the fact not just physically, but also uh, no low levels are going to want no low low levels can travel through the zone. The the uh, mobs just level way too high too fast. So. Uh, only low levels are going to be in the Coast of Despair. That's it. You're not going to see 
where I'm at now, where all these mobs are, you're not going to see low levels mixing with high levels throughout the zone. You just won't. They're going to be very restricted to areas of this zone. And then once they get high level, what, what's the incentive or desire, or where would the desire be to go back? Um, if I was a character that leveled up to like, say level 40, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to go visit the low level people, or I'm going to see what cool stuff there is to do in the new zone. Like, uh, well, you can't really, unless they give you a direct teleport to the very start, where to, which is level 1, or to maybe a direct teleport to one or two of the towns throughout the zone. And then, you can't, they can't just run there from the end of the zone, because they're level 40, and that there's level 50 mobs at the end of the zone. So, I'm not trying to be too pessimistic here. I know I'm going on a, on a little bit of a rant, but it's just questions that I have. And then, if the solution around this is just, well, just teleport you everywhere, well, okay, that's fine. That's, that's true, but uh, what about if you wanted to run there, and you, and you wanted, you're a little bit, you're more and more limited. Um, compared to the older zones with this one, if you were running around to where you wanted to go, you're, you're definitely losing choice and option. So, I don't know. It's just some misgivings. The zone's not out yet. I mean, the chapter's not out yet. So, could be very. I could be very wrong. We could see all kinds of new things that change my mind. But that's just some things that I've been trying to consider while I explore the area. So that's that's the whole zone. I'm just simply running backwards to give you something to look at while I rant. So um, that's about it. Um, you know, again, I'm Jeremy at Massively.com. If you have uh, any questions for me, you can email me at Jeremy at Massively.com. You can check out my column that I write about Runes of Magic every Monday called Lost Pages of Taboria on Massively.com. And you can, uh, yeah, I love... I love to get mail, don't worry about that, uh, if you have any questions or comments. And I'll just go ahead and end this video here, and see you next time, I guess.